So our aim is to compare the corrosion rates of a variety of metals and alloys. That's the aim. So I, when we do these kind of lessons, I try to set them out as you would write your reports. So um, just be aware of that. So equipment. We need an electrolyte. We need salt water, 5% weight for volume. We need test materials. So test materials include metal strips of aluminium, iron, zinc, and copper, and alloy strips of stainless steel and brass. Okay? So you can pick any sort of set of metals. It doesn't really matter as long as you know what they are. Okay? So there's no set um, of metals that you need to use, but these are just a good set to, to show you the range of different corrosion, um, corrosion rates for different metals. So our methodology. Ensure that all the metals and alloys are clean and free of corrosion. Okay? Place each metal or alloy flat in a Petri dish with the salt water so they are partially immersed. So remember, they have to be partially immersed. That's a big thing. Observe and record any changes to the surfaces of each metal, um, each lesson for several weeks. So what do we expect to see? Well, the iron, we'd, like, we'd expect to see extensive corrosion, pitting, and rust deposits. Okay? The brass would also corrode, so some pitting. Bronze, if you used it, some pitting will be observed as well. So these two are quite similar. Copper, again, similar to these three, because these are, this is alloys of copper. Stainless steel, you wouldn't expect to see any corrosion because it's stainless steel. Lead, again, is fairly unreactive, so you wouldn't likely see anything there. And for steel, mild steel, you'd expect to see extensive corrosion and rust deposits. Okay. Now, things that we need to know, uh, things that would be important to note about doing this prac. Um, if possible, use seawater um, if you have it available as the electrolyte, because that would be the most sort of real world kind of experiment. And also start this one early, because um, this is a quite long term experiment, because it takes a fairly long time for rust to develop. So um, make sure you start this as early as possible, and then um, you can gather a good set of results. Now place the metals in the electrolyte so that they are only partially submerged, that's a big deal. We have to keep them only partially submerged. And try to choose ions of various types, like cast iron, pig iron, wrought iron, and a variety of steels. So you can see the differences between the steels and iron compounds. Now ensure that the non-experimental variables are constant and make observations regularly. So this is key. Make observations regularly, otherwise you're going to miss out on certain things. Um, so it's good experimental technique to to try and record as many data points as you can. Okay. 